And welcome back. We're moving into our second segment for this morning. As a matter of fact, next month, which is about two days away, a, a day away, is actually going to be Fisher Folk Month. And it's something that we, uh, we're looking forward to because most of us, come on, we love to fish in. But for business, we've got a few people who are actually doing it. Wildlife Conservation Society Fisher Folk Month nomination for Fishers of the Year. In with us, Daniel Dawson, who is, of course, the Vice Chairman of National Fisherman Producers Cooperative Society Limited, and Ronald Lewis, Assistant Country Director, Wildlife Conservation Society. Lady, gentlemen, it's so nice to have you. Good morning Good and morning. welcome. Good morning. All uh, right. First of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to say good morning to Belizean and especially the fisher, the fisher folks. Huh? Mm -hmm. good, good morning, everyone. Yeah. All right. Thank so you. And that's if they're not out at sea already, because they, they might be soon. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're preparing now to, yeah. to, to go out. For Since the they don't check their weather report. Yeah. <laughs> I always hear from, from fisher folk that, uh, you know, you have to say the tides. We need to know the tides. But, but they have access to checking now. I want to start off, obviously, by saying uh, one of the things that is very clear is the fact that we're seeing fisher folk and not mm -hmm. fisherman. And please tell us, how did we get to this point? Um, so it's an inclusive term that we're yes. using because fisheries involves obviously both men and women. Yeah. If you look at the entire value chain, we're talking about the pre-harvest activities that involves preparing, you know, for going out to sea, and then the, har the harvest activity actually catching your seafood, and then the post-harvest, which is the processing. So when we look at fishing now, we're looking at all those activities along the value chain, and when you look at that perspective, then you see obviously both men and women are involved in that sector, mm -hmm. and both of them contribute to the to the income and the economic contribution that fisheries sector is having to believe. So we have an inclusive term that we're using. And you know, also when we look at our fishers, we have about 3%, it's very small, but 3% of our entire fishing population is made up of women, oh. yeah. right? And it's um, predominant, especially in the southern regions of Belize, in, in Toledo mm -hmm. and in, the, in Stan Creek district, you see a lot of fisher women also involved in the, yeah. in the sector, actually going out and fishing. You know, that's besides the fact those who are helping their husband, you know, preparing for the trip, you know, scaling the fish, finding the sell um, persons to buy as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love, but, and that's why I started there, so we can have an understanding when we talk of fisher folk, we're not just saying the person who physically catches the mm -hmm. fish, yeah. although they do take a, they do do quite a bit of work. Exactly. Talk to us though about this industry and what it contributes uh, to society, what what it's like uh, for the individual family itself who survive off of this industry. Well, um, to begin with, um, the fishing industry is very important, especially for the people that live lives on the coast of Belize from north to south yeah. of the country. It, it, it does provide a lot of income to the country yeah, as um, a foreign exchange, employment. Uh, we, we, we at National Fishermen, we offer our, our membership, a scholarship, you know, and things like that to, so to um, enhance the, the entire program and give them more courage to, yeah. to keep on working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I like to elaborate on, on the beginning of this industry. Um, I'm there for, for some years. Um, I, I was there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And 50 years ago, what? Well, a group of fishermen farm in San Pedro, a group in Belize, and one in Placencia. And they farm four cooperatives, Caribbean, National Fishermen, Northern, and Placencia. We took away the, 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 the buying of the lobster from the foreigners, mm -hmm. and we, we stood proud for 50 odd years. Yeah. But now we are facing a problem with the private sector mm. that is infringing in the livelihood of the fishermen. Mm. And we, um, on our part, we, 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 we welcome um, challenges, but we don't want to become like the Caribbean, some part of the Caribbean, and and Central America that, that fishermen have been deprived of their industry. Mm -hmm. Fishermen wants back their industry, uh, so we speak in right now. We, we need to get back that industry and 
continue the livelihood of these people. Mm -hmm. Maybe what we need to explain is how the cooperative works for the fishermen. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's I, I think it's been around so long that exactly. people don't always understand the role that it plays. How does a cooperative help a fisher uh, man or woman? Well, to begin with, they purchase a product from them, mm -hmm. they, they, they export it, and they give them a second payment. Mm -hmm. Which, and, and we work hard to, to enhance those prices, get good market. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, we're, we're getting some very good markets, mm -hmm. and the fishermen would be pleased mm -hmm. with, with the payments that we are going to give them. Mm -hmm. Because they, they are looking forward for an incentive every year. Uh, us at, at National Fishermen, the committee is working hard to get better prices, and we are do getting better prices because of the quality of our product. It's okay. very fresh, and it's you know it's nearby, mm -hmm. so our product is 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 on a great demand. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, we have to work hard for that group of fishermen to be satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you can't satisfy everyone, but yeah. mm -hmm. we are trying our best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk of the challenges with the private sector, what is it? So I go out, I catch fish, mm -hmm. and usually if I'm independent, I have to find somebody to buy, which yeah. may seem like an easy thing to do, but if I have a big catch, not so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can go, if I'm a member, to a cooperative, you purchase all my fish, but you may be purchasing at a lower price than what I may be able to get if I take my boat out to San Pedro and go to a restaurant. Well, that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, that's a major problem because the, the, the buyers are offering a dollar more, but mm. national fishermen could compete also with that dollar. But we are, we are, sub, we, we are subsidizing with ice, fuel, and, and stuff like that. And we do try to reach with the competition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the year, it affects the second payment. Because now fishermen are looking forward for a second payment. This private sector doesn't give a second payment. Mm -hmm. It's a one time. So a that's one -time. a one time. And if, if, if there's no cope around, that price would eventually fall. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, so, so it's not illegal for them to take their product to a private sector. So it simply means that the competition is on, which competition is always healthy for business. Right. Now, what is the fisherman coop doing? So that, or the National Fishermen Corp doing so that this doesn't happen? Well, they, they, they are trying to create um, better markets and, and better programs for the fishermen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, uh, we, 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 we on, on the other side, we also spoke, we also go and talk to the, the private sector. Yeah. Hey, let us be lenient and try to do the business the correct way, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I, I'm totally, I totally agree with you with the, with the, with the, the health of the competition. competition. Mm -hmm. But on, on the same token, the, the, the competition is being allowed to, to purchase product uh, not on a proper ground, it, uh, meaning that he doesn't have a receiving center or they just receive product on the side of the river. It's not healthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are complying with all the requirements of sanitary programs and, and stuff like that. So, in order to meet the foreign market. Standards, yeah. Yeah. And there's also a social aspect to the cooperatives as well, yeah. right? So, it provides the, sec you know, the first payment and the second payment to the fishers, but you're a member of these cooperatives. And, you know, and being a member, you're entitled to certain, certain benefits that they provide. So, the cooperatives also look at, like he said, providing scholarships to your children, you know. Mm -hmm. and, you know and it's also, like we said, it's a, it's a national thing whereby you, you know you basically are involved in this entire industry and you're the ones, you know, that are I engaging with um, the export of the product and so on. So, it's that also that social dimension of it as well, whereby your cooperatives are very beneficial to, the, to, to Belize's um, right. economy and our society. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it provides that benefit as well. Yeah. And you know, we, we're talking of the economic side of it, mm -hmm. and it's very important because, I mean, that's the primary reason people get involved in, mm -hmm. in this industry, if it's not recreational. Um, but there's also the very important conservation side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we can overfish, we can uh, fish out a season, and, and there's so many different threats. 
How do you work? I mean, I would imagine this is this was a difficult relationship to build, mm -hmm. but usually in conversation, I find out that our fishermen are in fact our first conservationists mm -hmm. out at sea. Talk to us about the relationship. Well, the, the conservation part of it is very healthy for the industry. Yeah. Um, some fishermen uh, don't welcome, you know, too much uh, mm -hmm. parks or no take zone or whatever, but it's it's good for the industry because the spin-off of those conservation will benefit fishermen. Yeah. Thing is that the worst case scenario here is that I put a reserve here, I put one here, I put one there in Glover's Reef, I put one there in Turnoff Island, I put one I put so many on the main reef. Mm -hmm. But I haven't got enforcement to take care of it. Mm -hmm. So you find that maybe one or two of these conservation area yeah. are productive and the, the balance are just you know mm. and those are the things that we look at we on the other hand we try to uh, to educate our fishermen that hey we need to fish the proper way mm -hmm. that's why we are so concerned about the private sector because we have land inside all over the all over the um mm -hmm. the place mm -hmm. and it you. encourages the, the black market because then there's not a proper uh, monitoring yeah. there's not there are not people they are checking the yeah, size. In other words, if I bring in something that's illegal or mm -hmm. not out of season or undersized to co op, I wouldn't even bother. Yeah, but if I take it to a seaside purchaser, mm -hmm. nobody's right. there to monitor. Right. I, I see that mm -hmm. very clearly. And from the conservation? From the conservation perspective, it's easier for us to work through the cooperatives mm -hmm. as opposed to going to each of these landing sites and working with these different groups. You know, if you, if you have a cooperative, basically, the cooperative is responsible for abiding by the regulations that the fisheries department has in place in terms of size limits, seasons, and so on. Mm -hmm. So we encourage fishers to become a part of our cooperatives, mm -hmm. right? Because, and through this, then we also work with the cooperatives because we identify the challenges that they're facing, especially when it comes to the private sector and the competition. Mm -hmm. So we engage the cooperatives and we look at different programs that will help them to become more competitive, whether yeah. it's looking at becoming more energy efficient, reducing your overhead costs, also looking at identifying other markets and other products such as the use of um, you know the live lobster which pro which provides their members a higher price yeah. you know Much introducing higher. a traceability system which basically documents you know from you know that product that is coming into their into their um, their, their their cooperative mm -hmm. and yeah. how it's basically moving along that cooperative into export and you know basically streamlining that system so those are some of the things that we're looking at as well as you know getting the, some of them fair trade certified which again will ah. you know look Looking at um, identifying potential markets that bring in better prices. Mm -hmm. So for us, yes, conservation is an integral part of the work that we do. But yeah. we identify that fishing, you know, it is a livelihood, and all of these different measures that we're trying to put in place affect the the income and the livelihood of fishers. So as a result of that, you need to ensure that there are benefits that you're providing. If you want to put these measures in place, obviously you need to provide benefits to the fishers. Right. Definitely. Rana, how unique is Belize's experience and how we work with our fishing industry? Because I know you have technology that you integrate that the mm -hmm. fishermen use. You work with the cooperatives. They're, they're very much on board. We've spoken to so many fishermen who say, listen, I know that it's not the same, uh, the same way it used to be in the past in mm -hmm. terms of accessibility to mm -hmm. produce. Are, are we ahead of the game in terms of how our fisher folk are doing? I'd have to say a lot of countries do come to Belize to look at what we have in place. Oh, wow. Our um, marine protected area system that is in place as well as the fisheries department and the close collaboration I have to say that they have with the NGOs and you know and that the NGOs have with the fishing community. So it is a model that people look at, you know, these other countries and they try to see how they can adopt some of these measures into their current fisheries system. Yeah, yeah. do we see uh, uh, at this particular point? For many years, we've been hearing about the decline of our products. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've been hearing this, we've been hearing this. Are, is there a rise in fisher folk, a decline, and uh, what's going on in that area? That, in that area, you will find that every year it goes on a bit. Wow. Because there are, um, there are, there are increase of vessels on the, on the sea. Mm -hmm. We have dredging. We have, well, fishermen are increasing every year. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the one spot specific cooperative, the, that product that came in last year will, will share among other, other people. Mm -hmm. So we won't be seeing, mm -hmm. you know, that same trend of 
production yeah. on, on a yearly basis mm -hmm. because of these um, in, infringements that are happening. Do we, do we monitor what our fisher folk are using to, uh, to, to, to catch fish? Because, you know, uh, just looking at social media and hearing the news, mm -hmm. uh, the rise of gillnets from uh, non Belizeans are actually uh, in, in going on down south. Are we monitoring what these guys are using to bring in their catch? Well, that's, that's a question for fisheries department. Mm -hmm. I think um, they, they, they do monitor it mm -hmm. because um, the, the, the nets are, are very devastating, especially if you use it in, in, in large quantities or, mm -hmm. or, or, or a large net. Mm -hmm. We know, and everyone of this country knows, that fishermen need to have something to feed their family with. So if you go and monitor for example, the nets. I can't go on the coastline and take away all the nets from these people because it will break their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I take a, a long net, for example, if it's 100 or 200 yards, and give them a 50 yards to, 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 to take to care of their family, mm -hmm. smaller. Mm -hmm. And I think these are the programs we need to get into mm -hmm. to monitor that situation. Also, on the other hand, we are divers. So um, what we do there, we, we do a lot of diving, so we try to have an eight-month season mm -hmm. and try to comply with work hand-in-hand -hand with, with fishers department so that our fishers could do the correct thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we also have programs that we go in different um, communities, uh, Copper Bank, Sartanea, mm -hmm. and those areas to talk to the fishermen and show them the importance of taking care of the industry. Mm -hmm. Now, June will be celebrated as Fisher Folk Month. Mm -hmm. it, it gives us a time to highlight the hard work that is entailed, the additional human resources that uh, every individual who goes out to catch fish mm -hmm. um, also utilizes. What are the particular objectives for your end in, in, in being able to have a month where we talk about the contributions of Fisher Folk? Well, this month um, activity the mm -hmm. entire month is being celebrated under the team working towards zero hunger with, sm with sustainable small-scale fisheries. Um, as you know, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals focuses a lot on poverty eradication as well as um, you know, working towards zero hunger. And also it looks at your um, low-income countries and mm -hmm. looking at how sustainable um, fisheries management can work towards addressing some of these issues. So this year, that is what the team revolves around. Um, there was a recent meeting, the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Ministerial Council had a meeting um, in May earlier this month. Mm -hmm. And at that meeting, they agreed to integrate what is called a voluntary guidelines for securing small-scale fisheries in the context of poverty, eradication, and food security. Mm -hmm. So basically, that is just an internationally agreed um, instrument, which for the first time looks at um, small-scale fisheries and the social and economic aspects of small-scale fisheries. What does that mean, though, small-scale fishing? So small-scale fisheries basically are fisheries that are very localized in your communities mm -hmm. and whereby the products obviously go a lot in terms of human consumption. Not mm -hmm. a lot of it is used, for example, you know, f for fish meal and so on. So th that is what their small-scale fishes looks, looks at. Um, so for Belize, we classify our fishery sector as a small-scale fishery sector, yeah. right? So this instrument is very important because for the first time, it brings that human rights-based approach to fisheries governance and fisheries management. Mm -hmm. And some of the guiding principles of it looks at gender equality and equity. But when they're speaking about gender, they're speaking specifically about women and men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it looks at um, also about the democratic process involved in the fisheries governance. So in ensuring that women are integrated in the decision making process mm -hmm. you know as well as it also looks at the cultural dynamics of the fisheries sector yeah. ensuring that some of these cultural practices continue mm -hmm. and these are maintained and they're not infringed by your private sector and about and by um, you know international investments and so on mm -hmm. so this was something that they 
that the, car that the member countries of CARICOM identified as very important and they're looking at how to integrate that into our fisheries sector. Mm -hmm. So that is what the team for this month revolves around. Mm -hmm. And there are several activities that we have planned for the month. We have our opening ceremony, the 1st of June, which is followed by an open day. And mm -hmm. I think the open day is very instrumental because it provides an avenue for different members of the sector yeah. that we would mm -hmm. see as non-traditional yeah. being a part of it and looking at how they contribute towards our fishery sector. So we have people from the Coast Guard, you know, the Fisheries Department, obviously, Women's Department, as well as the Cooperative Departments yeah. and so on. So looking at how they contribute towards this sector that we might not necessarily, you know, have identified as being members of it. Yeah. So we have the open day. Then on the 12th of June, we have our second annual Women in Fisheries Forum. Wow. Right. So that is a forum whereby we involve the women involved in the sector. Last year, we developed a gender action plan and we want to further that this year as well. And looking at how we can mainstream some of these things into our fisheries sector in mm -hmm. aspects of communications, decision making and so yeah. on. Right, and then after that we have the blessing of the boats, which is the thirteenth of June, which mm. is right before the opening of lobster season. Aye. Right, so before you lose all of them, <laughs> <laughs> right? So we have the blessing of the boat, and this is something that was way back. Mr. Dawson can remember that we, yeah. that they used to have. It's so a we, mass blessing, like yes, yes. Okay. right. Wow. So it's at the two major cooperatives that they'll do the blessing of the boat, right? And it's for us for, to ask for God's protection as they go out into you know into the sea, you know, fishing is recognized by the International Labor Organization as one of the most dangerous jobs yeah. right it in is. the world yeah, yeah. so it it's for us to you know for us to take time and look back on the blessings that we have received over the years yeah. and f for fishers in particular the good catch that they have and you know for us for them to ask for that as well as they go out definitely yeah. you let know me, uh -huh. let me just get two things in here one uh, what's what's a level of representation of women at the cooperative well uh, in both societies, uh, both um, Northern and National, we we uh, we don't have discrimination. We we welcome a, any, any any female member mm -hmm. or whatever, you know. And as a matter of fact, we are we have we have our name there as National Fishermen. Uh -huh. We want to change it as, uh, as to put like National, national fisher Fishers fish or fish uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So uh, not to discriminate, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, we welcome the, the female because we it, we have a lot of female working at the plant. We have exactly. a, a lot of female people out at Giz mm -hmm. that would but like to, you know. Let's 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 so. face the fact that uh, you know when it comes to female going out there as well, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. are more than capable, <laughs> much more yeah. patient in terms yes, of getting yes. here because they know how they know what it is like to eventually trying to bring that income and especially feeding their family yeah. one of the things that i've got to uh, touch on though is of course the open day you know it's something that i think is a very wonderful idea and i'm saying this from the standpoint that especially when it comes to open day we have uh, we have young people going out there mm -hmm. to uh, eventually uh, view what goes on mm -hmm. and i think this is one of the things that uh, is especially for our livelihood on a daily basis that is missing when you take these people out there to see how it works, they better mm -hmm. understand, they follow the rules, mm -hmm. and they carry that out. They, they carry it out there. Who is expected to visit this open day? So the open day is invited to the general public. We're targeting schools primarily to come and visit. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's at the memorial park before I forget. <laughs> and it starts at 11 o'clock. The opening ceremony is at 10, but people are invited as well to come to the opening ceremony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll have the presence of the Honorable Dr. Omar Figueroa at the open day. So, wow. you know, you can come on out. So we're targeting those persons. And before I forget, the 29th of June is the actual Caribbean Fisher Folk Day. Okay. At that day, we'll be recognizing the Fisher of the Year Award of the Fisher of the Year. So at this time we're accepting nominations. You can go to the Fisheries Department office or the Office of the Wildlife Conservation Society on Coney Drive to act to receive one of the nomination forms. What's the criteria? Yeah. So the criteria you have to be a licensed fisher, right? Um, we ask that we want to know whether or not they're a member of a fishing cooperative or a fisher association. And we ask people to explain to us why do you think this person is the fisher of the year? What qualities have they demonstrated mm -hmm. that would make us want to recognize them as the fisher of mm -hmm. the year? Um, so those are some of the, you know, some of the questions that we have in there for persons nominating them. And in the past, what have been some of the unique qualities that have uh, helped you to select the Fisher of the Year? Okay, so last year we have Mr. Leo Vihildo Leo Tomai, uh -huh. and I think one of the outstanding things for him is that he works so closely with his fishers, and he also worked closely with the NGOs and the fisheries department 
to bring about this management regime called manage access mm -hmm. right so i think people have heard a lot about that so he was instrumental in the implementation of that program in Belize. Yeah. so that was one of the big qualifying factors for him and i think the close relationship that he has with his fishers and representing them in so much you know forums and committees bringing yeah. about their issues yeah, let's okay. get back to the scholarship aspect of uh uh, of the, the whole situation. And I, you know, and I think it's a very great gesture, especially to have people be a part of the COPE. Uh, how many people right now are on scholarship there, if you could remember that? And what do people have to do, or do they have to do, to get their family enrolled or their children enrolled? OK, the first part of it, um, I, uh, I don't quite remember, but it's a, it's a substantial amount of uh -huh. people mm -hmm. that had benefited from from the scholarship. Well, so far, there are people it's, on there. Yes. Mm -hmm. It started from fourth farm to sixth farm. Wow. So they, they are grateful for that. And you, all you have to, to do is to be a loyal fisherman that brings your product to national fishermen. There are also criteria on it. If you don't have certain amount of pounds, you know, like 200 pounds of lobster tail, they won't allow you because um, they were, you know, it's, it's something that is, yeah. has set recently because due to the competi competition, yeah. people yeah. sell their product all over the place yeah. and, and, and then bring a little bit, the, bring a little the bit into it. Mm -hmm. So, so we are looking for loyal members and yeah. people, you know, Excellent. That, that, Excellent. that are working wow. with us. When's wow. the deadline for the nomination to Fisher of the, the Year? The deadline is the 15th of June, right? Yeah. And we have advertisements out now. Yes. Right, so <laughs> please fisher, submit. <laughs> which means fisher woman, fisher man. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. First, involved in the fishing industry. The first year somewhere. was a woman, actually, Mrs. Anna Ramirez from Punta Gorda. Yes, talk. I remember exactly that. her. I remember in, and yeah. the thing is, the unique thing, her entire family is involved in it. Yeah. Right? Her sister was nominated last year, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So it's, it's a very unique thing to look at their family and how they, you know, their parents you know, ensure yeah. that, they, that mm. the daughters are also able to fish well, dive yeah. well as well. So. Excellent. Right. If, if I may say something here pertaining to that, I would like to thank um, WCS to revive this program, yeah. for reviving this program, because it started in some pages some, uh, some 60 years ago. Wow. With... with, with Dia de San Pedro, that started, you know, that Fisherman Day. And uh, every, every opening of lobster season, we, we have this type of activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but and that's it where the blessing of the boat came the, from? The blessing of the boats, everything. Yes. Um, and that went dormant due to the, the falling of the society out there, the cooperative oh. went down. Oh, wow. And um, when I heard about it, it was, you know, something very interesting, yeah. something, you know, that bring back, brings back the, those those wonderful memories. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you for coming in. Of course, uh, June officially kickstart uh, Fisher Folk Month. Uh, you are looking for nominations yeah. for Fisher of the Year. Uh, those, uh, uh, I, I believe you said it's an application form or nomination form. Mm -hmm. They're accessible at WCS office and Fisheries Department. Fisheries Department. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you as well thank for you. having All us. Right. And best of luck uh, as the lobster season approaches, oh, especially. Yes. <laughs> we have no um, natural disasters because it's Oi. devastating for us. Yes. Yeah, I could imagine. But thank you so mm. much once again. We are going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we will be talking about an upcoming art exhibition. So stay tuned.